Hi everybody, hope you're well. Um, we're going for a bit of a live stream tonight. I've got two rigs outside. Um, this is the first one here. Let's have a look. Um, so we're in Astrophotography Tool. And can't really see it too well there, but that's uh, M51 that we're looking at at the moment. And I'm taking uh, 300 second exposures. And currently, the guiding is currently okay. It's not too bad. It was really bad earlier. Um, for some reason, the seeing wasn't so good tonight. But it seems to be a lot better now, which is great. So this is PhD2. And the guiding is really good now. I'm really pleased with this. So that's the next exposure just coming in. I know the image doesn't look brilliant there. Um, I'm using a wired connection. Oh, sorry, uh, not a wired connection. I'm using a connection over my mains tonight to the um, telescopes outside. Let's have a look at the other rig. So this one is Astroberry and it's currently doing quite well. Pretty pleased with how it's going. Guiding um, started off well and then kind of peaked quite badly and now it seems to have got a lot better which is good. Let's just have a look at the guiding figures. Mm, 1.64 it's not brilliant but it's okay. I don't think the seeing's as good tonight as it was last night. So I've managed to get this automated all the way through now um, so that you can actually see um, that I'm imaging with the Altair camera, the 294C, and I'm guiding with um, an ASL, oh, sorry, an ASI ZWO uh, 224. That's a color camera. And it seems to be working really well at the moment, so that's good. So just have a look, see. Our next exposure is coming in in 10 seconds, so we'll just have a quick look at that. There we go, not much to see there. Um, the plate solving said it was M101, um, so I'm kind of hoping it's on M101. But it's difficult to tell. I don't think the seeing is as good tonight as it was last night. Last night was lovely and clear. But it doesn't seem to be as visible tonight as it was last night. So we'll just look at the other rig again. Uh, so we're on um, the 102 ED. This is um, the Altair rig at the moment, doing 180 second exposures. We'll just see the next one coming in. What's the guiding doing? Well, guiding's really good now. As I say, guiding wasn't very good earlier. It was pretty rubbish, actually. Um, but it's got a lot better. Point two one. That's very good. So there's, uh, I know you can't see it so well on this connection, but that's M51 there. Um, very small in my field of view, but I can crop in a little bit on this. So um, I, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to crop somewhere around there. 
and see what it looks like. If you guys have any thoughts or any um, any questions, feel free to put something in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them if I can. I'm going to um, see if I can get you a picture of the rakes at the moment. So I'll just see if I can call up a picture. This is actually from last night, if I can find it. Okay, that's the rig outside that you can see. It's um, basically the 130 PDS that we've got here and the 102 ED which is there and that's riding on an EQ6, an AZ EQ6 at Big Pond and this is an, my EQ5 Pro. This rig is entirely um, being driven from a Raspberry Pi and it worked really well last night until I came to finish and all of a sudden it disconnected from the mount, which was a bit worrying. But um, normally it's the Altair camera that it's not so happy with. But tonight, touch wood, anyway, it's, um, it's working okay. So yeah, that's the rig at the moment. And in this toolbox, basically... It's got a little switch and some bits and pieces to allow me to connect to the rigs from inside the house. So we'll go back to, this is the current um, image that we've just had. I'm afraid you can't see much tonight because it's, um, it's the seeing is not as good tonight, I don't think. Um, but you would be able to see M101 in the middle there. Let's go and have another quick look at the guiding. Currently 0.6, oh, sorry, 1.65, 67 now. So it's not brilliant, but um, for this, I, I always say this, for this mount, that's kind of what I would expect. And on the other rig, this is astrophotography tool. And we're taking uh, 300 second exposures. And the guiding on this is actually really good at the moment. 0.24. So this bit here that you can see, this is the dithering which we had. Earlier, it locked onto a really tiny star, and um, the guiding was rubbish because it kept losing the star. So, I've um, I stopped the whole session, or well, I paused it, and then I got uh, guiding to select a different star, and it seems to be much better now. So there we go. So the image tonight isn't as good because I'm using a different connection. I was using a wired connection last night and tonight I'm actually using a mains uh, Wi-Fi extender. Well, not a Wi-Fi extender, a wired extender. Um, and I don't think it's... I don't think the images coming in are as clear. But um, uh, obviously it's clear on the camera, but it's not clear over the network. So, um, But that's M51 that you can see there just in the middle um, and on this rig if I just minimize that one you can't actually see the galaxy at all but it's M101 which is in there so if you guys have any questions or if you'd like to um, whack anything into the comments please feel free to do so uh, it'd be really good to hear from you guys um, so yeah feel free to put something in the comments and um, uh, we can have a chat about what's happening here if there's anything of interest. 
something which I did find which was quite interesting. Uh, there's this thing called a drift plot, which basically shows you kind of like a an archery target of where your mount is guiding in relation to uh, the star it's selected. And I find this quite fascinating. So obviously the green is good, amber is not so good, and red and outside of red isn't so good at all. Um, I just think it's quite fascinating looking at how well your guiding is going. But um, the other thing with this which is interesting is that sometimes the stars are still round even though the guiding's not brilliant. So, um, at least to my eyes, my untrained eyes. So this bit here is the dithering period that we've just had. And now it's commenced guiding again. This isn't a particularly good guiding graph. Uh, 1.99 if you compare that with my guiding on the EQ6 at 0.25. Uh, but it's, you can't really compare those two mounts. I mean, they're, they're significantly different. So this is the rig in the garden. Um, this is a photo from yesterday, but I, it's basically exactly the same tonight. I, I bring everything in a, at the end of the session. Um, so I've got the uh, 130PDS EQ5 Pro, all powered by a Raspberry Pi. And this is the AZ EQ6 with uh, the Altair 102ED. And that's got a mini computer on it. So I'm using APT on this one, uh, astrophotography tool. And on this one is using Astroberry. And that was my uh, imaging project to try and get uh, the whole thing to be controlled and working on a Raspberry Pi. And it seems to be working. The only things which I've noted are sometimes I get disconnects of various bits. So I've had uh, problems with cameras connecting both types, both ZW and Altair, and I've had problems with the mount disconnecting. Um, so I've tried all sorts of things with powered hubs um, and um, trying different combinations of how the USB is all plugged together. And I've finally got to a point where it seems to be working. So I'm quite pleased. And if I get to the end of tonight's session, I've not had a single issue, that's success. And I'll be super happy. So, yeah. Ah, Philip, you're back. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, Philip joined us last night. Are you imaging tonight, Philip? If anyone would like to put a, a comment, um, please feel free to do so, and uh, I'll say hello. Um, this would be M101, hopefully it will be when it's all stacked, but uh, you can't really see it very well. Oh, Philip, you've got clouds tonight. Okay. Yeah, we've. I don't think the seeing's quite as good tonight, but guiding is, if I look at the guiding from... Guys, about the same, I have to say. So maybe the seeing's okay. Maybe it's just because I'm using a different network connection tonight. Um, so I don't think the resolution of the pictures coming back on VSC is as sharp. But guiding's pretty good. 0.25. So that's cool. And. In astrophotography tool again I'm on M51 trying to get a few more hours on this so last night um, I, I got to the end of streaming last night and 
um, I've realized that the uh, all of a sudden when I've, I'd closed everything down I was just about to stop everything and I just realized that the mount had disconnected on the Raspberry Pi so um, I've replugged the Raspberry Pi onto um, a, with a different combination so I've now got the Altair camera on a USB 3 and I've got the USB hub with the ZWO camera, the guide camera on um, so it's going through the USB hub for power and then it's going onto uh, just a standard USB 2 connection and then I've got the mount going to a standard USB 2 connection which doesn't need power because that's that's already uh, powered from the mount and so far it's touch wood it's working at the moment let's have a look at the overview so I don't know if you guys have seen this before. This is quite interesting. Uh, you get various graphs on Astroberry, um, or K-Styles rather, this is K-Styles. And it shows you how things are performing. So you can see all of these different bars are showing you that the mount's obviously connected. This is the guiding. So where it's blue, it's showing that um, it's doing dithering. And the captures from the camera are all shown here so these are the individual captures and then on this one here you can see the yellow uh, line is the signal to noise ratio that's just the latest capture ah yes I can just see the galaxy there brilliant that's a much better resolution you can just see the galaxy that's really good I'm pleased at that cool that's good so, um, and then this red wiggly line is my guide graph, <laughs> which isn't so good. Yeah, I think you're right, Philip. So Philip's just said, um, as long as your guiding area is below your resolution, everything is fine. I wholeheartedly agree. That's my excuse <laughs> for my bad guiding. Um, no, um, I think you're absolutely right. Yep. Hello from Germany. Your Astroberry is working as well. Thank you, Rainer. Yep, um, that's really good. I'm really pleased to hear that. It's a tricky, it's a tricky setup. I said this last night. It's this idea of having what is basically a cheap, um, uh, single board computer, and a free OS, and basically free automation software, and being able to automate your rig entirely with it is really really attractive i don't however think it's an easy option for somebody just starting out i think there's an awful lot of gotchas and the learning curve if you're just starting out with astroberry is quite steep uh, it is with all uh, in fairness with all astronomy stuff but um uh yeah i i still think it's utterly brilliant hello roberts Oh, you're on M53. Oh, good luck too, buddy. Um, yeah, no, it's it's good. I'm really glad that people are, are imaging tonight. It's um, it's really good to see that people are out and taking advantage of the the good weather. Unfortunately, we've got um, uh, we our clocks go spring forward. They uh, spring starts and the clocks go forward on Sunday, which basically means we lose an hour's sleep. And it also means that it does not get dark until really late, which means my imaging is difficult because quite often I have to be up very early to get to work and about 5.30 to get to work, which is fine. That's all good. But um, it just means that I can't stay up late to do imaging. So um, I don't think I'll be doing as much astrophotography during the summer months but I'm going to do other things other videos as well so I'm maybe thinking doing a load of lunar stuff and um, yeah um, see how things go if you guys um, have any ideas of things you'd like me to look at um, or maybe something to, to, to cover in a video um, 
yeah, let me know and I'll try and do something and try not to make too much of a muppet of myself. Uh, let's have a look at the other rig. So guiding's good, 0.24. And I know the resolution is not very good here, but that's M51. Has anyone got a scheduler to work? Um, I've not tried it, Philip. No. No, I've not tried that. That's something I'd quite like to have a go at, where you can basically schedule maybe two targets, because let's say the first target goes up and then um, it goes out of view, and then the next target comes up and you salute to that one and go to that one. I'm just happy to have got this far, to be honest, with Astroberry. So it seems to be working. I'm just going to quickly check outside, make sure everything's working. So I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm just going to mute the sound. I'll be back in just a tick. Hey everyone. Everything's good outside. It's all looking good. Hey Robert, so um, you've got clock change at the weekend as well. Videos of star clusters. You know what? Yeah, star clusters are really, really a challenge because um, the first I did M16 once and it looked a bit like somebody had got a paintbrush full of wet paint and kind of run the finger over it and it just went onto the screen and I wasn't very pleased with it so I kind of got put off from doing star clusters but you're absolutely right I think star clusters are incredibly beautiful and it would be a real challenge to do uh, some star clusters so yeah, I think that's a good idea, actually. I'd like to do M16 again. Try and do it justice so it's less like it's paint. So, how's this going? Everything seems to be still working. Guiding 1.27. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go back to Astrophotography Tool. So we've got people from Germany. Where else? Is every, where is everyone? Does everyone... Um, let me know where you all are. So we've obviously got people from Germany here.
what temperature do you guys cool your cameras to? Um, I've kind of gone for minus five and that seems to be working really well. Obviously my weather camera doesn't have cooling, it's just fan cooled. So that just kind of works around ambient, slightly below ambient. Ah, Kiel, Northern Germany. Cool. I meant to zoom in on a star. I know it won't be hugely See, it's difficult to tell looking at this preview if they're good stars or not good stars. I mean, th if if you were to look at that one, you think no, it's not a good star, but it's hard to know really. You use minus ten, Philip. Okay. I wonder about um, things like condensation as well uh, and how quickly we should cool cameras so they acclimatise properly so they don't build up moisture. Oh, using a DSLR. I've st I have a DSLR. I was going to do an end-to-end -end, um, uh, picture using a DSLR on the 130 PDS. I think that would be quite fun to do as well. Because I Astro modified uh, a Canon 550. It's quite an old second-hand one. Oh, you're in. You're close to Frankfurt. I meant to say this incorrectly. So is that Hanu? And Rainer, you're in Stuttgart. Cool. It was, it was quite funny a minute or two ago. Uh, I have a, a little green screen behind me, obviously, and um, it's just one of, it's just literally propped up on a chair. And a few moments ago, I just heard this sort of weird sliding noise and I envisaged this green screen was about to fall on my head, um, but it didn't. So it's just, it's sort of teetering on the brink of falling at the moment. So it's quite funny. If it does, if it does fall me, at least there'll be a comedy moment then. Yeah, the the five three three from ZWO looks really good actually. Actually, all the five three three uh, cameras are very good. That's the one with the square sensor, isn't it? It's quite a um, it's quite a square shaped sensor, isn't it? Uh, let's have a look at what's going on so uh, I know the resolution is not great uh, so apologies for that but this is uh, M101 uh, although you can't see it and we'll have a quick look back so that's M51 there and for those who've not seen the rigs yet so uh, these are the two rigs that we've got this is the photo from last night um, EQ5 Pro running AstroBerry on a Raspberry Pi and a 130PDS and the camera here is a fan cooled Altair camera and then on this rig we've got an AZ EQ6 and it's got um, a doublet refractor on there which um, 
uh, has a cooled camera, which is the uh, 269C and the 290C for guiding on this one. And you can't see the guiding camera on, on this mount over here, but that's um, a ZWO224. Uh, which Altair uh, cameras? So uh, this one is a fan called. It's an Altair 294C. That's right. Yes, 294C. And that's fan called. And this is the Altair 269, but it's cooled. So it's a cooled camera, that one. And um, basically, where Altair sometimes have X demo cameras and... Um, they advertised them on their website and I just basically as soon as I, I saw them I gave them a quick call and um, they do you a deal so I, I've that's basically everything that you see there I've, I've done on a deal um, and um, all bought second hand and then uh, refurbished like this this mount for example uh, was it had broken legs and all sorts so I bought the bits from Skywatcher and fixed it up and it works really well actually now Yeah, the 183C fan cooled. It's a good camera, very good. The only thing with the fan cooled cameras is that um, they are more noisy. You will notice the the images which are produced are noisier. Um, however, if you take more integration time, you'll be okay, just as you would with um, a DSLR. Uh, they are they do run cooler. Than a DSLR. However, in the winter, I had images coming in at minus one, which is really good. So a fan cooled camera can hold its own next to a cooled camera. Obviously, it won't be as cold, but it's um it's still pretty cold. I really like the fan cooled cameras. If you were to take sort of six to eight hours upwards of exposure time, I think the noise will be negligible. I'm kind of going to be shot for saying that but yes I think the noise is a lot less um, and also the guys told her their support is really good as well so um, uh, the 294 um, C camera is really good with longer focal lengths because its pixel size is quite big the 269 C has very small pixels um, and is better with uh, shorter focal length refractors. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a good camera. Um, I mean, the camera that I'm kind of drooling about is the 26C, but that's ridiculously expensive. Well, it's not ridiculously expensive. It's, a, it's the right price for that particular camera. Let's go back and check the rigs. So um, I know you can't see it, but M101 is there. And everything is working on the Raspberry Pi. And then on the other side, we've got, uh, so this is on the 102 ED. Um, on the EQ6, AZ EQ6, so there's M51. I know the resolution isn't great here. Um, I'm not using a wired network connection. I'm using a connect um, a network that's going over the mains, so I don't think it's as high a resolution. I don't think the data rates as high. VNC seems to be struggling a bit with the pictures coming through. Oh, Rain is saying he uses a full frame, a, Pente a Pentax full frame as well. Yeah, I think I think all. Um, so, Robert, I think you're right. Camera prices have um, here have gone up. I think um, one thing with uh, I'm not. I mean, I like Altair stuff, but um, they do occasionally do X show deals and X demo deals. So it's well worth um, going on their Facebook page and um, having a look for when they do deals because you can 
get quite a lot of money off the cameras. So it's just well worth um, keeping an eye on that. Oh, Rena, you're on M M51 as well. Excellent. Cool. What what um what focal length are you using on that? So this this is what M51 looks like with a focal length of 715 millimeters, and I've got um, a field flattener in there, so I've not reduced that at all. That's just the native focal length. So I suspect if you've got a a longer focal length scope, you'll probably have a bigger a bigger image. I am going to crop this in. Um, kind of crop it somewhere around there when I finally get to process this. Well, there you go. You can just see a bit of the spiral and a, a, a sort of blob. So that's M101 in the middle there. Oh, something's gone on with the guiding. It's gone a bit mad there. Let's have a look. Okay, something's gone wrong on the Raspberry Pi. In fact, it looks like it's stopped guiding completely. You can see the stars drifting up. So I am going to stop this rig. In fact, it's actually stopped the sequence. You can see it says auto guiding stopped aborting. So let's have a look, see if the driver is still working or not. There we go, look. So this is this is the issue I had last night. That basically the mount lost connection. So all of these commands here saying it's, it's failed, which is interesting. So I'm going to quickly try and reset this by disconnecting. Okay, so it won't know where it is at the moment because of all of this. So let's see if we can rescue this at all. What I'm going to do is see if I can park the rig. M101 was there, an EQ mod saying it's. So I'm just going to nip through and see what's INDI. Mount is parked, parking in progress. Mount is parked. I'm just going to go and check the mount outside. I will be back in a moment.
Okay, so so basically, uh, it's all still working. the the mount um, The mount disconnected. That's what all of that orange is. And I've um, although it says the mount is parked, and it thinks it's parked, it isn't parked. So I'm going to disconnect all of this and start again. Um, so this might be quite fun actually. Basically, we're going to bring this mount back to life. So let's close all of this. And I'm going to come out of K stars as well. Okay, so we're back at the desktop. Reconnect to K stars. Tools, ECOS. Right, let's see what comes up now. Right, okay. So it looks as if the mount has reconnected. Oh, hang on, no. All sorts of stuff going on. Warning initialized, cannot load. Okay. Interesting. The camera has connected and that has connected. So let's see if it will slow. Let's put in M101. So, I'm going to go and see if the telescope is slowing. I'll be back in just a second. Nope, didn't slow, so I would have to restart the Raspberry Pi. So while that's rebooting, let's just check back on the other mount. Hello David, evening all. Um, so the other mount's guiding really well and is working well. Hopefully in a moment Astroberry will be back on the other side. Astroberry is back up. So we'll load K stars again. Uh, 
and back into ECOS. Let's see what Ikimod. Oh, again, it's coming up with some this weird thing here. Mount is parked. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird for um. Okay. Let's have another go. So let's see if we can get this to work. So let's go to M101 again. So I don't know if my mount's slowing at the moment, but I'm hoping it is. Well, it says it's just slewed, so let's plate solve and see what we can see. Um, so I have to do this weird thing with my plate solving because I'm using an Altair camera. Sorry, I'll just close that window and close that one. So what I have to do is go in here, change the exposure length to 3, and then I have to do a looping exposure. So it counts down from 3. Oh, come on. Oh, I love it when Astroberry plays up. <laughs> so I can't get anything to work now. Let's stop that. Let's try again. So I've restarted it. Can I do anything else to give this a kick? That's live video. Let's see if live video works. Yes, five frames per second. So it can do live video. That's interesting. Now let's see if it'll do a loop. Now it's doing... It's just weird. It's weird. Why would it do that? So that's a three second exposure that's now been taken. Okay. That's good. Let's stop that loop. So the camera's now working. Let's go to capture and solve and slew to target. And it's a five second exposure. And it's the 294C capture and solve. So it should hopefully now take a five second exposure. There it is. And it should now hopefully move the mount. So it looks like it's solved it. It's I don't think the mount's moving because those stars are not moving. Yeah, but oh, it says it's been successful. I'm just going to, I'll be back in two seconds. I'm just going to go and see if the mount is actually pointing as it should be. Bear with me. Okay, success. It is pointing where it should be. So I think we've got that bit done. Let's go back and get some guiding going. So I'll leave that to configure itself. In the meantime, let's build 180 seconds. What time is it? It's 10. 
let's just put 20 in for now do a 10 second delay between them gain 400 offset was 99 and I don't think there was anything else yeah you're right um, for the plate solving was super fast it was really quick okay so I think that will, that's kind of the plan let's load that in there let's go back and see what guiding is doing so it's still preparing That's interesting. I've never seen it do that before. Of course, it could actually be my um it could actually be the mount itself because it is an old mount, this EQ5. Uh, David, when does Orion come back? Oh, that's a really good question. Okay, Orion is coming to an end now. Um, it will come back kind of late October, November time. It will begin to come back. And you'll be able to image it during the early hours of the morning at that time. And then you'll be able to image it in the evening probably from sort of February time you, the, the actual Orion almost Orion season is um, where, where when it's early evening and you can see it sort of 7 o'clock in the evening there we go, guiding started cool um, it's sort of January, February time um, so the way the seasons work uh, in terms of uh, uh, of the different se astronomy seasons if you like so we have orion or the nebula season from sort of uh november december and then january february M then it begins to come to an end in march towards the end of march and then um there's galaxy season that kicks off now so this is why everyone's you'll see a lot of galaxies so it looks like guiding has started again and it's the figures aren't brilliant i'll try and let that settle before I start the rig imaging again. Um, so yeah, the galaxy season is nowish. It's kind of just started. Um, unfortunately, with clock change, you find that um, the, your imaging time goes a lot later. So um, it's not looking good. The guiding on this three point oh three. The deck's gone nuts. getting worse and worse let's see if this if it can actually pull it back I wonder what the Let's have a look at the driver. Motion control. Yeah, I've put the guiding rate as high as I can, because otherwise it doesn't really do a brilliant job of guiding. No, it's really struggling. Oh, it's bringing it down slowly. RA's not too bad, though. But declinations really struggle. It obviously had something weird going on there. Okay, I really want this this number here. I want to get sort of below two really before I start imaging again.
Yeah, you're right, David. The M101 is um, is small in a 130PDS. The uh, I think it's 680 millimeter focal length doesn't do it uh, justice. It's it's small, but um, it was kind of a, just a, a, a an easy choice for me in the back garden. So that's looking better. That's what I like to see. If I can keep those green, the green and blue line. Okay, I think I'll start imaging now. So that was weird. That's so that was yeah, twenty of those start. Okay. So we're imaging again. So that's interesting. So between now, uh, when did I kick this off? So I, I started imaging eight o'clock. So eight to nine, sort of course to ten. So I got just under two hours before it crashed. Okay. Oh, you've got good guiding as well. Yeah, but I mean, this particular mount isn't it's it's my it was my first mount and I fixed it up so I'm quite I, I quite enjoy tinkering with it um, and it's it's kind of not worth an awful lot so I don't really want to sell it so I can play with it um, but the proper mount is the um, the EQ6 um, which is uh, where's the photo there's the photo so that's the EQ6 and that's my EQ5 Pro um, so the EQ6, I mean, the guiding on it is is really good. So if we look at the guiding figures at the moment, there we go, 0.26. So that one is is being really good at the moment. It's being well behaved. Yeah, but I was thinking about doing. So I've actually got hold. I managed to get again um, reduced um, a different uh, saddle for my EQ5 Pro and I was thinking of doing a complete strip down and maybe changing a couple of bearings on there but I think the RA is okay it's mainly on deck that I have problems I think um, so I was going to kind of strip it down give it a degrease and clean and regrease it put this new saddle on and um, see if that improves things So let's go back to the pie. Okay, so guiding. Oh wow. No point sorry, one point zero one. That's probably the best guiding I've had yet. That's really very good. I mean, it's not like a, the EQ6, but it, that's good for this mount. Point nine eight. Okay, let's see what the first image coming in is going to look like. There we go. Okay. So that's the first exposure. Oh, this is so you can just. Um, I know that um, the because it's not debayered, it's in black and white, uh, so you can only just see it as a blob there. However, if you look at K stars, you can see that guiding went really high, and now it's gone all the way back to one, and it's kind of hovering just above one. And it did do dithering as well. Let's see if what dithering did. So dithering was... See how it's kind of got that straight line across there? That's the dithering period. And then it kicks off with guiding again. Cheers, Philip. Take care. Uh, thanks very much um, for checking in.
So I wonder with Astroberry if if it's just something I need to just kind of accept that it's going to crash out on me every now and then. And then I have to restart it and then do everything we've just done to bring it back. Because it'll probably be fine now for the next couple of hours and it'll probably do the same again. Oh, that's interesting. Can you see, if you look at this exposure, there's a line going across the screen there. I move the cooling aid. So you can just see a satellite has passed over on that exposure. Okay, that's the next exposure. Um, David, that's a really good question. So, um, about USB, yeah. So the the Pi itself is powered off the mains so it has a, a proper Raspberry Pi branded um, power supply. I was building a power supply, um, a standard USB power supply and I haven't finished it yet because I keep getting these little buck uh, converters to take 12 volts down to 5 volts uh, to power it but um, every time I put a USB tester on it, um, the USB uh, voltage, it shows that there's something wrong. So I keep getting faulty buck converters. So I was going to power the, the whole thing off a 12 volt battery. So the idea was you could have a location rig where you literally just take a 12 volt battery, plug it in and everything would, would power uh, without using any mains. I haven't managed to get it to work yet. Uh, so, oh, sorry, yeah, the USB hub. Um, so the way it's plugged in at the moment is um, the only thing on the USB hub is the ASI guide camera. The Altair um, 294C is plugged directly into USB 3. And then the mount is plugged into a standard USB 2 socket, but the mount is powered anyway, so that's fine. And the hub output, which only has the guide camera on it, is plugged into the other USB 2 socket. I've deliberately kept the USB 3 bus free so that if there are any problems with um, the size of the files being transferred, I'm hoping that I won't have any uh, bus issues with that. So that was, that was kind of my... Um, Theory is probably utter rubbish, but I've tried so many different combinations of plugging. This one seems to be working at the moment. I was hoping that it would resolve the mount issue, but we've just seen that it stopped. Um, it's basically the mount stopped responding. So, yeah, a bit of a shame. Um, I would love it if I could just... I'd love it if I could just say, yeah, it's reliable, and I could just leave it imaging all night and... I have not got to that point with it yet. I'm really pleased I've got to the point where it actually does image though. I mean, this is good. This is, compared to where when you start off, um, to, to actually getting to image. Um, yeah, no, it's good. 
I have a horrible feeling though I might get another mini PC at some point I, if I because I, I would quite like to do a live stacking session because SharpCap does live stacking and I think it would be really good to um, slew to an object, plate solve on the object and then go into SharpCap and then do a live stacking so you could see uh, a nebula appearing before your eyes. I think that would be really quite fun to do. Right, so it's half ten-ish or thereabouts in the UK, so um, I think I'm going to leave this running for a bit longer and try and get as many more exposures as I possibly can. Um, thank you all uh, for joining, I really appreciate your company um, and also for uh, writing questions and stuff in the comments, it's really good. Um, and if you have any uh, questions or any ideas for videos and things, feel free to suggest them. And uh, I'll sign off now. So um, thanks very much for joining me. And I will see you all. Well, probably won't see you all, but um, I'll see you all in the next video. So take care, everybody. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers now. Bye.